is very cheesy. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, hello there. Welcome. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, reading about Henry Knox. You know, the great. What? You don't know Henry Knox? Like, well, he's a. Really? He helped George Washington win all of his battles. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have the teacher. Well, um, let's take a seat if you're not already taking a seat, and I'll start. Before we get started in this video, I just want you to know what artillery is if you don't already don't know. Artillery is a long range based weapon that could fire from one point to another, but at a farther range. So that's why he was picked. He was an expert at this, so he was the first artillery commander ever to be here and was handpicked by George Washington. Yes, Henry Knox was George Washington's artillery man. He was handpicked by him and helped George Washington win many of his battles. But Let's go back in time to see when he was a kid, just like you and me. Yes, Henry Knox did attend school. He had a regular education like us, and he went to college, but dropped out because he didn't really like it all that much. He joined a local militia called The Train, where he learned all his artillery skills that would help him in later years to come. He was a very brave man, he was very well fit, but there's also one thing he liked doing more than just artillery. <coughs> Yes, he loved eating food. That was one of his hobbies, actually. How he stayed fit for a while is beyond me. But <laughs> don't be fooled. In his later years, it didn't go so well after that. But back on the main subject, in his early life, a lot of things happened. He was what we would call a patriot, which was for America and was basically anti-England. So, if you were a loyalist and you said that in front of him, you might kind of want to leave the room like right now like go one thing people really don't know he was also there for the boston massacre so that actually changed a lot about he looked at the british other than stuffing his face with food all the time he also loved other things like his future wife lucy and you'll never guess what made them love each other food it's food yes they actually based a relationship off food Actually, what's very funny and awkward at the same time is Lucy's family. They were totally pro-England. So can you imagine sitting at the dinner table if you were Henry Knox? Hey, you want to pass the mash? No? Uh, oh, okay. Moving on in life, Henry Knox actually got offered a job from Britain itself, but he turned down the job because it would take down his patriotism. But later on also, he got offered a job by you-know-who. The American Army. When Henry Knox joined, General George Washington finds him, and they begin to talk, and when he finds out he's really good with artillery, he goes up to Congress, that was at the time, and says, hey, this guy's good at artillery, and then they promote him to artillery, or not general, but artillery commander. He will be general in a later time. It's very funny, when Henry Knox asks George Washington where the artillery is, this is George's response. Uh... Yeah, it's pretty comical if you look at it, but it's not so comical at the time, because they really need those cannons. Later on, they find a fort, they capture it, and they get all the British gear that was inside it, including cannons, so that problem was solved. So the war goes on, and as anything, George Washington is the heroic figure in this, but that's not the case. You see that in a lot of movies or cartoons, like like educational cartoons especially, but it never shows Henry Knox. He was the one that helped him win many of his battles. So as the war raged on, he was part of, if you ask me, one of the main reasons why we won. Well, the war finally ends. That must mean the end of the story. We can all go home, right? WRONG! No, actually, we're halfway there, so don't worry. But in this time, General George Washington and General Henry Knox, yes, he was promoted general. They were having all the time, and, um... Uh, then something sad happens. George Washington dies. <laughs> oh, I need him back. No, but seriously, George Washington really died, and Henry Knox was really hit hard. After a while, he retired from his duties as a commander in the artillery side of the U.S. military, then moved on to sort of an office job, and he, where he was paid about $3,000. That may not seem a lot like now, but back then, that was a lot of money. Money. 
Later on in his life, he finally retired from that job and was in retirement. And then, one day, his friend invited him to have some nice chicken. Little did he know that would be his last meal, sadly. He swallowed a chicken bone that he couldn't breathe through his throat anymore. When you can't breathe through your throat, you got a problem. And before you say he could have went to the doctors, well, first of all, he didn't make it to the doctors, but even if he did, I wouldn't really trust the doctors at that time, be honest. Oh, he's got a pain in his chest? Let's cut him. Oh, he got bit in the arm with an ant? No, we're not gonna cut him, are you crazy? Shoot him! Yes, and sadly, on 1806, our good friend Henry Knox has died of a chicken bone. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this gave you some information on how Henry Knox lived and died. So thank you, and goodbye.